Hello booktube, hello friends, welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books, I'm Elizabeth and I am just going to do a quick little video here. My husband's running some errands, checking on our property that we have in another county. I didn't even know he was going to do that today, but as soon as he got up and announced he was going to go and do that, I thought, oh, I can film a video, but I'm not really prepared for any of the videos that I really need to do. So I thought I would just give you a quick update on Amish in April and what I'm reading and I would love to hear from you down in the comments about what you are reading for Amish in April. Also on our Goodreads group, please, or well, my Goodreads group, Lizzie Face Comfy Corner, I'll leave a link below for that. Uh, be sure and comment there. I have not updated my own reading on there after I started the threads. I have not gone back and, uh, and chatted yet about what I've been reading, but I will do that today. So, um, I have finished two Amish books this week. I got a late start on Sunday, I, which was the first day of the Amish in April readathon. I was finishing up, uh, and I did finish three books that I had been currently reading that I had hoped to finish up on Saturday. I didn't get them done till Sunday. I still had one other current read that I had started just a few days prior that I'm buddy reading with my sister and I have continued to, to work on it and at this point I have two or three chapters left so I am going to go ahead and finish that. Uh, then I'll just focus completely on Amish books until the Amish in April readathon is over. So I just thought I'd give you an update on what I've been reading this week. All of the non-Amish books, with the exception of the one I'm finishing today, I will save for the end of the month and tell you about those. Incidentally, today's the 22nd, and I have finished 22 books so far in April. So I'm working on a book a day, and I don't usually do book a day until May. Um, in fact, I even kind of made that a hashtag a few years ago. Elizabeth Tyree and I have been doing book a day in May for a few years now. So that's the plan for May, but looks like I'm doing it for April as well. So what I'm finishing right now is A Hearth in Candlewood by Delia Parr. My sister and I have been buddy reading this. She has uh, finished it and has moved on to her Amish books that she's reading. She's reading the Half-Stitched Amish Quilting Club series right now. I think it's a reread because I gave her those last summer when I went to visit her, and I think she's already read them, but she's reading them again. It's a really good series. But anyway, this is the beginning of a trilogy. We... Um, our, you know, we've been reading this together and chatting about it. It's the first time I've ever done an actual buddy read with my sister. So uh, I've been enjoying it, and this is a fantastic book. I have really loved this book, and I'm completely looking forward to the rest of the trilogy. I own two trilogies by Delia Parr. It's the first book I've ever read by her, and I love it. I'll tell you more about it later. Then the Amish books that I have been reading, uh, I... I sort of veered from my TBR. I said I was going to stick with Audible Escape, and I have veered from that a couple of times, but it's I have a good reason. So I wanted to listen to the Amish Brides of Pinecraft series, and I thought the first one used to be on Audible Escape. It's on Hoopla, but it's not on Audible Escape anymore, but books two and three are. So I thought, well, maybe I'll get this first one listened to before Amish in April starts, but I didn't. So I just went ahead and started with this. And then I'm going to stick <laughs> with Audible Escape. But um, this is the first book in the Amish Brides of Primecraft series by Shelley Shepard Gray. I really, really enjoyed this. And I, uh, it's called The Promise of Palm Grove. And then I went ahead... It's right like the same day and went right into the second book and finished it as well. So even though I didn't get any Amish books done or even started on Sunday, I finished two of them on Monday. So the second one is A Proposal at Siesta Key. And so this is book one and this is book two in this series. And I really enjoyed them. I think part of what I liked about it a, it's set in Florida, which is where I live, and because it's set in Florida, they can go outside. So, B, I also enjoyed the story, the characters, the romance. It's very sweet, and it's, you know, it's, even though it's modern day, it's old-fashioned, but a lot of the Amish books I've read have taken place in the winter time, and so they're trying to stay warm, they're bundling up, they're getting out in their sleigh in the snow and all that, and these 
are set in Florida. So they can go outside, they can get a breath of fresh air and and go to the beach and, and all of that. So it's just a melding of two worlds, I guess. And uh, I, I love them. I'm really, really enjoying them. So when I finished the first one, I thought, oh, I'm going right into the second one. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep on going. And the reason I haven't read the third one is because there is a novella that's not on audio that I can find, but it is, uh, the ebook is on Hoopla. So I went ahead and started this yesterday when Emily was at occupational therapy and I was waiting for her. It's um, called A Wish on Gardenia Street, also by Shelley Shepard Gray. And I got about 15% of this read while Emily was at therapy yesterday. So I'm going to finish it before I move on to book three, which is also on Audible Escape. And I'm glad that I pick this up in the right order because the this first book we meet a couple and then in this book they're going to be getting married so it definitely is a continuation of the series so then the other series that i have continued with is on audible escape and let me get to it here it's a series that it's by Amy Clipston. I started it last year when I listened to the Forgotten Recipe. You've probably also heard Sarah talk about this one because she read this a couple of years ago. And I think she may be continuing this series as well. She may have already read the second one. I don't have a physical copy of the second one. But here's a picture. It's called The Courtship Basket. And I love this. I, it is much better, in my opinion, than the first book. I'm enjoying this so much more. I think I'm over half done with it. And uh, I really like it. It's about the sister of the main character in the first book. And she has kind of been jilted in the at the beginning of the story. So her cousin invites her to come and work with her at a school. So she's teaching at a special needs school. There's a boy there who is being kind of raised by his brother, his older brother. Their father's still living, but he but their mother has passed and the father has kidney disease and is on dialysis and is very ill. So um, she's trying to help this boy and then meets the older brother and so a courtship is brewing in, in that story. And uh, I, I love this. It's really good. So then I have a couple of other things started. I mentioned that I was going to be reading The English Daughter by Cindy Wood Small and Erin Wood Small. This is an ARC that I received from Waterbrook Multnomah and it just came out yesterday. It was released I believe. I didn't look to see for sure if it did, but as far as I know, everything was on schedule. But you can order this. If you go back to my announcement video, there is a link in that video to order this book. And then once you've ordered it, there's an email address for the rep that I deal with from Waterbrook and Multnomah. And if you email her with proof of purchase, she will send you some free stuff to go along with your order of the English daughter. So now I've started this. I have read about four or five chapters and we'll see how it goes. I have some predictions. I think I see exactly where the story's going. And if it's that obvious, I'm going to be disappointed. But you know how things go. There may be some twists and turns along the way that I can't see coming. And I hope there is because I would love to be pleasantly surprised, but we shall see. And I'll let you know when I finish it, uh, what I thought about it. But meanwhile, if you'd like to read it with me, it's not too late to get a copy. I'm sure they have it in places that are still open where there are books like Walmart or grocery stores. You might be able to find it there and, uh, or you could order it and then you would get the, um, you know, the free stuff. If, if you just purchase it, you might be able to take a picture of your receipt to show that you purchased it and send that and still get, if you tell her, uh, her name is Chelsea, the rep from Waterbrook on Loma, tell her that you bought it because I'm reading it and you're going to read it with me, you might still be able to get, um, to get that stuff. I don't know. I hope. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what kind of influence I have. <laughs> <laughs> Probably none. But uh, anyway, uh, this so far I'm enjoying. It's a little more scandalous than your average Amish book. So we shall see how things turn out. And I think that's everything that I have uh, started all the Amish books. My plan is to go right on into books three and four of the 
Amish Heirloom series by Amy Clipston. And then if I get those done, I've got a couple of others on Audible Escape that I'm going to read. The Fiddler by Beverly Lewis and The Storekeeper's Daughter by Wanda Brunstetter. Two amazing Amish authors. In fact, uh, one of my subscribers, Terry, wants Sarah and I to do a video about a favorite Amish author. So if I can get that done this week, I will do a video about Beverly Lewis and what I know about her and the books I've read about her. So Hopefully that will be coming up before the week is over. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to give you a quick update. I have got to go pick up some school lunches for the girls. And um, I've got to do that before before it's too late. While it's still lunchtime. They just are open for a couple of hours. It's a drive through thing where you go and you pick up the lunches. And, uh, you know, we're very appreciative of it. Katie, she doesn't eat it. But it does help stretch our food budget. And so I've got, you know just uh, I've got plenty for Emily to um, to eat without me having to stop all my spring cleaning and everything to uh, to prepare her lunch I just have to stop my spring cleaning to go pick it up <laughs> but that's easier than cooking sometimes we have been enjoying doing more baking and cooking at home we've been enjoying each other's company thankfully and uh, and just enjoying being home and improving our home life I've been doing a lot of cleaning and a lot of going through stuff and working through stuff I still have a lot to do but uh, other than that we're enjoying being home and just taking advantage of this time I hope you are doing well I hope you're healthy and um I will have hopefully some updates with some other things like our game challenge and stuff like that and some other bookish videos soon. But meanwhile, just know that um, I'm praying for you guys. Hope you guys are well. Oh, and I did sign up for the Light and Dark Readathon. That is May 1st through the 3rd. That sounds like a lot of fun. Check that out. And, uh, and that's it for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.